Hey guys, my name is Gabby. Welcome back to my channel and today I'm gonna be filming the best books of the decade I haven't been reading books this entire decade I mean, I haven't been reading as actively as I have for these last few years in the entire decade But I did start really actively reading books in 2014 But I have read books that got published throughout the whole decade that I think are really great And so I wanted to bring you my favorite books from this whole decade and I have a list of about like 20 ish books here probably a little bit more but I decided to pick two or three books published within every year of this decade and these are just my personal two or three books that got published within each of those years and you can probably like if you know some of my favorite books of all time then you probably have an idea of what's gonna be on this list let's just jump right into it starting off the decade with 2010 my two favorite books that got published in 2010 is Room by Emma Donahue and Forbidden by Tabitha Suzuma these are two very, very different books. This one actually follows from the point of view of this five-year-old boy only knows life within this room and you're trying to figure out kind of like why. I actually went into this book having already seen the movie. So I really, really loved the movie and this book was also just freaking incredible. It's just the best. And then Forbidden is a really, really kind of controversial, heartbreaking love story between these two siblings. And I know it sounds kind of cringy when I say that, but this author has really written something incredible to make me care about something I never thought that I could care about. And this book is just devastating and it's tragic and it's one of the hardest books that I've ever read. All right, from 2011, I have three different books published that year. The first one is gonna be Ready Player One by Ernest Cline because I honestly feel like this book was a game changer. This book was something that was revolutionary for the idea of like sci-fi books and it was just really, really well done. I also really love the movie adaptation. I know I'm in the minority on that opinion, but I really love the movie adaptation of this one as well. The second book from 2011 is Attachments by Rainbow Rowell. And I know that this book is also kind of like controversial among readers, like people either love it or hate it. But I think I have really fond memories of this book because I read this book on my 20th birthday and I just remember really loving it and feeling all the fuzzy feelings. And I love that this book takes place in the 90s and it's kind of about like the start of email and it's a cute romance, like it's just precious. And then the third book from 2011 is A Monster Calls by Patrick Ness, which is one of my favorite sad heartbreaking books like this is one of those books that'll make you cry and i actually reread this book again this year and it just oh my god it still just breaks my heart reading this but it's beautiful and this book is like half graphic novel and then half regular novel my two books published in 2012 are aristotle and dante discover the secrets of the universe by benjamin o'lear signs i mean is anybody really surprised that this book is on this list i freaking love this book i've read it twice but i would really love to reread it again soon it follows these two boys aristotle and dante through the summer of their I believe it's their senior year of high school. Aristotle is just a character that I relate to a whole lot because he's really like struggling with his identity at this age and he's feeling just very like angry at the world and can't really describe why. And I just love the hell out of his character. And then my next book from 2012 is Gone Girl by Gillian Flynn. I read this book in January of 2014 and then that year my love for reading really took off and I really credit this book for that. And this is one of my favorite thrillers of all time and I'm actually currently rereading this one at the moment and it is just great. Like it is so great and I forgot how clever and smart the writing is and nothing can compare to Gone Girl, okay? There's just nothing that compares to this. All right, for 2013, I also have three books. The first one is gonna be Fangirl by Rainbow Rowell and I'm sure none of you are surprised about this one either. Fangirl is my most reread book of all time. I've read this one three times. And Kath is my most relatable character of all time, which you probably know because I say this all the time. I just have a very special place in my heart for Fangirl, and I just really, really connect and relate to this book more than anything else. So next book is The Humans by Matt Haig, which was also published in 2013, which is also one of my favorite books of all time. This is actually my number one book that I read in 2018, and I just love it so freaking hard. And if you had no idea what this book's about, it's basically about this alien who comes to Earth in the body of a human. And and it's about him like kind of judging humanity and thinking how crazy we are and just like not understanding why we do the things we do. And it's a very clever and funny social commentary on human beings. It's just the best. And then the last book from 2013 is Vicious by V.E. Schwab. Like, holy crap, there were some great books published in 2013. Vicious is one of my favorite books of all time. And it's this crazy 
super villain, superhero story and the lines are kind of blurred. Like you don't really know which character is supposed to be the villain and which one's supposed to be the hero. And Victor and Eli are two of my favorite characters of all time. Like Victor, Vale, and Eli ever. Like they just have incredible, cool superhero names too. And this book is just one of the best books of all time in my opinion and it needs more hype like i feel like nobody has really read this one a lot moving on to 2014 i have two books from 2014 that are my favorites that came out that year the first one is big little lies by leanne moriarty i actually personally didn't read this book until after the tv show came out and i had watched the tv show first and then i read this book even after that i could still appreciate this book so hard because this book is a thriller and it has a really great plot twist at the end that I can only imagine would have made the book even better if I hadn't already seen it in the show. These main characters are incredibly complex and Madeline's character is one of the funniest characters ever. I love the underlying messages about feminism and like rape culture in this book and it's just, it's incredible. It's so good. And then the second book I have from 2014 is You by Caroline Kepnes. And I actually did read this one in 2015. So I read this one not too long after this one got published. This one is freaking so good. It's one of my favorite thrillers of all time and Joe Goldberg is one of my favorite crazy characters to read about. He really reminds me of like the Patrick Bateman, Norman Bates type of characters that I just really find so fascinating to read from their point of views because they're just so crazy and this one's just a whole lot of fun to read and I have reread this book actually twice as well and I would really like to reread it again sometime because it's just it's so good. All right and then in 2015 I also have two books and these two books are probably some of my absolute favorites of all time like just the best. The first one is The Nightingale by Kristen Hanna and I actually did read this book this year in 2019 and was absolutely blown away by how much I loved this and this one is a historical fiction World War II novel which is something that's a bit out of my comfort zone and why I thought I don't know if I would like this or not. This story mainly revolves around these two sisters and I think that's what really drew me into this story and the story is just heartbreaking and beautiful and oh my god just the journey that these characters go on is unbearable to think about and the book is just incredible like the hype is real the hype is real and then the next one from 2015 is a little life by hanya yanagihara i don't know like i've been giving it some more thought and i feel like this book might be my all-time favorite book like it's really hard for me to pinpoint like one book that is like my all-time favorite book but i feel like this one is a strong contender for that spot because this book is incredible. It's over 800 pages long and it took me over a week to read this whole book. And a book has never really had an emotional impact on me the way that this book has. And this is by far the most depressing book that I've ever read. But Jude is like one of my favorite characters ever. And like, he's gonna stay with me forever. Like him and Willem, like Willem is probably actually my favorite character in the book. God, I just love them so much. Moving on to 2016, I actually have three books from 2016 that made this list because they're all freaking great. <laughs> the first one is gonna be The Hating Game by Sally Thorne because I really credit this book as one of my favorite romances of all time. Lucy and Josh are just so much fun to read about and I feel like this was the first book for me that did the hate to love trope so well because before I had read this book, I wasn't even sure if I liked the hate to love trope in romances. This one was just so much fun and Lucy and Josh are just so cute and I love the fact that they're both trying to one up each other to get this job working at a book publisher. It's just a whole lot of fun and it's just one of my favorite romances of all time. The next one from 2016 is It Ends With Us by Colleen Hoover, which is my favorite Colleen Hoover. I don't think Colleen Hoover can ever beat herself for this book because this is just the best. This book made me cry like a freaking river out of my eyeballs. Not only is the story really tragic and heartbreaking, but also Atlas is one of my favorite male characters to ever exist, ever. Like, I just adore him so much. And that name is so cool, Atlas. Like, oh my god, I love it. And then the last one is We Are the Ants by Sean David Hutchinson, because is anybody surprised? No. I always say that this book is my favorite book of all time, and this book is an incredible young adult LGBT novel about this boy named Henry, and it involves aliens, which is probably why it's like my favorite book of all time, because I love really like light sci-fi, but mostly contemporary stories. Like, it's my thing. So of course this book is on this list. This is one of my favorite books of all time and I adore the hell out of it. So yeah, moving on to 2017, I have The Hate You Give by Angie Thomas, an incredible young adult novel that I'm sure you've heard about because I'm pretty sure this is going down as a classic. This story is inspired by the Black Lives Matter movement and we follow this young girl named Star who is with one of her friends when the police kill him for no reason. 
and she kind of has to deal with the aftermath of that on her own and this book is just incredible it's like it's really really something special and this book really is like an educational experience you know like it really taught me so much about like things about white privilege that I never even considered and I just think this book is phenomenal and I think this is one that everybody should read and then the second book from 2017 is The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo by Taylor Jenkins Reid which oh my god this is also one of those books that is a high contender for my favorite book of all time this was my favorite book that I read in 2017 and this book just freaking gutted me like I just love this book so freaking much I love Evelyn Hugo's character I love that she's complex and she's not perfect and she makes mistakes that you probably don't agree with in this book but she's so freaking human and so real i just love the relationship that she forms with this person in this book because i'm not going to spoil it for you because you know she has seven husbands and you're probably not supposed to know which one it is and who she ends up with but their romance is freaking beautiful it's one of my favorite things of all time and i just love this book with all of my being moving on to 2018 one of my favorite books that was published in 2018 is The Simple Wild by K.A. Tucker. And this book was a complete surprise because previously I had been pretty disappointed by anything K.A. Tucker related. And this book is just amazing. It's one of the best. And this book is a romance novel that takes place in Alaska. And this book really turned me on to reading any book that takes place in Alaska because I just got obsessed with Alaska after this book. This girl, Kala, who's like 26, and this guy, Jonah, who's a pilot. This book also has this like hate to love romance vibe, but then it also has this beautiful father-daughter story because she's going back to Alaska because her dad has cancer and is possibly dying soon. So she wants to like reconnect with her dad before that and then Jonah's the pilot that works for her dad. And oh my God, it's just the best. And then the second one I have from 2018 is The Cabin at the End of the World by Paul Tremblay. I know this book might seem like a strange pick from that year, but oh my god, I'm obsessed with this book. This one is like a horror, kind of like apocalyptic novel because it follows this gay couple who is at their cabin in the woods and they have their adopted daughter Wen with them and then these people show up, these four people show up at their door threatening to like, it's like a home invasion story, they're trying to get into the house and they're saying that they need Eric and Andrew to help them prevent the end of the world by performing this horrific act. This is just one of my favorite book plot ideas ever. It's just really creepy and the home invasion part of this book it gave me more anxiety I think than I've ever had while reading a book ever. I am obsessed with the ending of this book. I really really love ambiguous endings and I feel like Paul Tremblay did such an incredible job with this story. Like it's just one of my favorite horror novels ever if not my favorite horror novel ever. Alright and lastly I have 2019 and the three books that I chose for 2019 include The Turn of the Key by Ruth Ware because this was my favorite thriller that I've read this year and it's honestly one of my favorite thrillers that I've ever read. Like I had the most giddy high after finishing this book. I was just so excited. Something that I learned about myself this year is that I really love thrillers that kind of take place in a spooky haunted kind of house and something that feels like slightly paranormal like that is my favorite shit apparently and i just loved this book i loved it because of that so much the next one is going to be red white and royal blue by casey mcquinston because i really feel like this book is going to go down as something special in the history of books because this book really like reimagined what our 2016 election would have been like in the united states if a female had one and this story is just the cutest male male romance ever because we're following the first son of the first female president of the United States and a prince, the controversy of this relationship is real and the messages that this book sends about that controversial relationship is just perfect and beautiful and this book made me cry and I just really adore Alex and Henry so much like this book was just so fun to read and then the last book from 2019 is The Unhoneymooners by Christina Lauren which I'm also sure no one is surprised because I talk about this book all the time and this book is great I read it twice this year it's just the most heartwarming fun book because it's like a hate to love romance but then it also has like the fake dating trope and it takes place mostly in hawaii and it's just the most fun like these two characters have the best bantery chemistry ethan and olive are just so cute and i found olive to be a really relatable character with her like pessimistic attitude towards things like it was just really nice to read about a female character 
that wasn't the most like optimistic ball of sunshine all the time. And I just really related to her and I just loved this book so hard. Those are all of my best books of the decade and this was super fun to do. And um, I'm hoping that I didn't miss any of my like favorite books of all time. So fingers crossed, but um, please let me know if you agree that some of these books are also your best books from the decade. And if not, then let me know what are some of your best books from the decade. It's just so crazy that an entire decade has already gone by so fast. Like, I am really excited for 2020, though. I feel like 2020 is just going to be freaking lit. Thank you guys so much for watching, as always. And I will see you guys soon with a new video.